Ill ghetto viewers, we're out of here again from the Victorian Hobie Cat Association, Victoria. And we're going to be doing a little maintenance procedure on the back of a Hobie 14. We're going to, we're going to show you to replace the rudder cams from original. These are original cams. They're a bit worn out. The, the gap's open big here, so they're a bit sloppy. It's got the original roll pin, so we're going to have to knock this roll pin out. That's the first thing we're going to do. Now they're pretty hard to get out. I couldn't knock it out. So the next way to do it is to thread your hacksaw blade through there on one side. Tighten it up and cut it out. It gets sliced through the pin and you've got to take your blade out and you've got to shove it in the other side and do the same thing on the other side. Tighten up the blade. and try and slice down the other side. Righto, cam falls out. There's no damage to the plunger. Blow all the spider webs out of it. Now we're going to attempt to remove these the other parts of the roll pins here. With a little bit of persuasion, you can knock these pins out. And they come out pretty easy. There they go. Okay, no damage to the castings. As you can see, I've got the, the old cam here, and if you see, it's, you can see the finger on it's bent back a little bit. It's not as tight as the, the brand new one. I've got a brand new one on the back there. They're lined up, and the gap's opened up, which causes your rudders to uh, not click up and down properly, and you can, it won't work very well. So we're going to put a new, a new cam in here with a, from the uh, Hobie Cat replacement cam kit. Now, part of the reason why this, these cams are wearing out and the rudders are hard to kick up and down is because this plunger, which sits on top of the cam, the cam sits up on there and it rolls around as you lift your rudders up and down. This spring here, as you roll your cam around, this spring goes up and down. But if the spring's too tight, it won't allow this cam to turn with ease it'll be under pressure and this finger gets terribly worn out on the top here and as you can see the spring is very high and it's very hard to push this this plunger here right down it's a lot takes a lot of pressure up this the spring is actually too high it should actually be level with the casting so, it's, so we're going to see what why that is and what's happened so i'm under the boat here I'm looking under the, the lower casting and if you look up in the casting here you'll see there's a screw a plastic screw you can put a flat blade screwdriver on it and you can turn it and that adjusts the height of the spring so we're going to see what what this screw is up to and then how high it is screwed in 
need to use kind of a, um, a fairly large left blade screwdriver to get on there. So if I go in there and turn it, I can actually turn it. So I've got the screwdriver in and I'm, I've found it's, it's right up the top. Someone, someone's wound it right up. It's pushed the spring right up. So if I unwind this, the screw, you can see the, the bobbin here retracts down into the casting. So now it's level with the casting. There's less pressure on that spring. And that's where it should be set. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's about uh, level there. It's right on level with the casting. You can't go much lower or the little screw will fall out, which we'll have a look at anyway. As you can see, I've removed the, the screw. It's a flat blade. You need a large flat blade screwdriver. You tend to damage it if they're very tight and you can't get them out. But luckily, this screw moved. And it sits on top of that spring. And that's what the cam pushes on. The cam pushes on this, this bobbin as it rotates and it needs to be able to compress the spring. It's a very tough spring so you, you, don't, want, you don't want to have too much pressure on it. But the bobbin's pretty loose, in, uh, the screw's pretty loose in the casting so what I do is uh, I, I don't use grease or anything. I just use a bit of Teflon tape. I put a couple of bit of wraps of Teflon tape around it just to take up the slack so it doesn't fall out when you're trailering your boat. And it's a lubricant, it won't rust. It doesn't go stiff, but it provides a bit of packing there. So we're gonna put that back in. So we're gonna put this screw back in. Then we'll just put it in a, just a couple of turns just to get started. Put your spring in. Now the spring's a little bit low, about five mil below. We're going to bring it up so till it's level. It's, it's actually just below level. Next thing is to Put this on. I don't know what the name of these parts are. But anyway, that sits in there and can move up and down with not too much pressure. So that's the right height. Spring, spring level with the casting. Screw must be loose, bit of Teflon tape. Put your bobbin on, bit of a wash out with water. I don't use any grease or anything. I think it can splash up on the rudder cam and cause trouble. So that's ready to go. That's working and smooth. We're going to put the cam in now. Okay, so what we have here is a, a cam kit from Hobie Cat. Rudder cam kit. Suits 14 and 16. And it comes with a couple of pins. We'll show you what they're for. So these, these pins are removable pins. So if you break another cam, you can actually replace your cam without having to cut the old, the old pin out. It just screws out. But what we've got to do is that pin goes in. We'll put that pin in there in a minute. But we need to chamfer for the hole here. It, it, the hole's a little bit too flat. And these, these pins have a, a countersunk slightly. They're a little bit countersunk there. So we're going to have to make sure that recess, recesses into the casting so this top arm doesn't foul on it. We're going to get a drill bit out, and we're going we're going to countersink countersink this casting. So this is a bit of no return sometimes. We've got to do a careful countersink so that a screw goes in a fair bit. has to 
sit. That's pretty good. That that'll clear that screw. That's not that's not a problem. It's almost flush. So I'm happy with that side. We'll, we'll do the other side, and I'll I'll come back to the cam. will fit. Okay, so we have a brand new cam. Install it in the up position, that direction, not that way. Get start start off in that direction. Put a glove on. Push it down. And it's got good tension, but not too much, not like the old one. You need to get this pin in here. And if the hole's a good size, it'll go straight through. I made it, it's a good fit. And you put this nut on the other side. You do need to make sure these screws go in flush they need to go in flush so that this arm doesn't hit it on the way down and jam sometimes it can hit and jam you want, want these screws in flush on both sides so I've countersunk both sides for the new replacement screw so it's time to put the new cam in. We grab the cam. Put it in with a glove on because it hurts when you push it down. Push it down. Put that pin in there. And then on the other side, you can actually put the little screw and you can feed it in there, nip it up. It's always a bit tricky to fit these screws in there. There we go, they're pretty small. You put it in, it turns on the other side, so you gotta you got to get another screwdriver just to hold the other side of the screw. But the other important thing is, it's dangerous. If you push too hard, you can put the screwdriver through your, through your hand. If you slip or in your eye, if someone's helping you, never put your face in line with the, line, with the, the power stroke of your screwdriver. You can do it up. They don't have to be that tight. They seem to hold pretty good. And that's enough. You can check the movement of the cam good not too not too stiff that's a cam replacement next thing we'll do is we're going to set up the the rudder so we get the right angle of rake and this screw needs to be in the right spot very important okay now the bit we've all been waiting for the secret screw how to adjust it okay I'm going to show you my way maybe it's the right way maybe it's the wrong way but we'll see open for criticism there. I actually take this bolt and take it all apart. Unscrew it. That's what it looks like. That pushes against in there to bring the rudder up and down. The next thing you do is put this in. Get it in all that. Just push it up a little bit. Sort of up near the top, whatever. We usually start at the top. Just nip it up. And then just lock your rudder down. But the next thing is to loosen it just a little bit. See that it's free. What you want to do is uh, just check this camera position. Down there a bit. You want to keep a bit of pressure on the trailing edge of the rudder here. Put your leg against the trailing edge of the rudder. Give it a bit of a push. And then knock that up. And in here you can get a screwdriver. You can hook in behind that, that plate in there. And you can actually push the plate forward as well a little bit. So do all that pushing. And then tighten it in that direction. Tighten up the screw. 
until it's tight. Take that screwdriver out and then just tighten it just a little bit more. Let's get up to the right tension. Now the rudder is down here, you can see it's, it's tight. I'm happy with that even though the space is a bit loose, that's not my main problem. My, what I'm looking for is rudder rake. It's tight and to kick up a rudder, always kick the bottom about halfway along and pull at the same time on 45 degrees with your arms up on the beam here. So we're going to kick this up and that came up really easy. I didn't have to force it and down. Sometimes I, I wet it. I put water on it. I don't like the, the cam to get hot in the sun. So I might just put a bit of water on it. Just spill a bit of water on that cam just to cool it down. Because the plastic's quite soft, it doesn't like the sun. So I um, check the rudder, just check the up and down position. It's pretty good, it's pretty tight. And that's really all you've got to do. That, that's enough pressure to tighten up that mechanism there. But we will, we will take it for sale and make sure that it's not kicking up too easy. But it's nice, I don't necessarily look for the click. Sometimes the click is a bit too loose. I like it to turn and, and, and stop with a very small click at the end, not a big clunk. You tighten it up like that and that's, I think that's all we've got to do. But the reason is, when you click it down, click it in, some people experience weather helm on their rudders, which means they're going upwind and they have to always pull on the rudder. Like the, the boat's always trying to round up into the breeze. They're always pulling, which means the rudder here, let's get the camera. It's this rudder, it's not, it's not tucked under enough. It's not tucked under the boat enough. If you tuck the rudder under the boat further, it'll reduce your weather helm. The, the, the boat, the rudders will feel neutral and smooth, beautiful. If it's too far under, you'll get lured helm and you'll have to keep pushing on the rudder. So you want to find that sweet spot with the, with the rake. Now Hobie Cat generally design it so it's almost perfect. When you set the rudders up from, from factory fittings, they're, um, they're, normally, they're normally pretty right. Under here, if you kick up the rudder again, under here, I'll just check, the camera is here, You'll see there's a bit of rubber. There's a strip of rub rubber under here that stops the, the rudder wearing out as it keeps clunking into this casting here, which is good. But it also causes the rudder to sometimes sit back too far and you experience weather helm. So what, what, if, what you can do is take this rubber off, probably lose your warranty, but take the rubber off so that the, the rudder will, it'll, it'll, it'll go under a lot further. You'll actually get it under another millimetres which is enough to reduce your weather helm. I'm not sure if that's always been there, that rubber's only there to you know look after the rudder they're wearing tear so it doesn't wear out and split and all that. That rudder will slowly creep further under the boat. It'll go under under more and more and more and you'll be able to get rid of your weather helm by doing that. Um, weather helm's not just rudders, it, it, it can be um, your sails or your, your mast rake, you might have your mast back too far on the Hobie 14. Here's the Hobie 14. But if the mast is back too far, you will get you'll get weather helm. It'll start to feel horrible if your mast is hanging too far over your rudders. So I'd suggest put, put your mast forward, one hole or two holes, or look at another boat. Get your mast forward, feel the difference. The other thing is it could be your, your, your sails might be you know all worn out and you and it's and you experience a lot of weather helm because of an old sail. Um, or it could be where you're standing on the boat, stuff like that. But you can always fix it with a bit of, bit of rudder, rudder rake. Just push them under further. And I've done it on a, quite a few boats, 16s as well. And, um, and it's, it seems to work and the boat just sails beautiful through the water. So um, that's, that's it. Um, that's all about rudders and rudder cams and the whole maintenance on it. Rudder pins is straightforward. I don't worry too much about the packers. Anyone can sort of figure out how to pack out their rudders to make them better. But um, I'm not going to worry about towing. All that stuff's uh, pretty straightforward. A little bit of towing on your rudders. But um, today was just mainly about replacing cams, setting up that spring tension, and setting up this uh, top bolt 
up here. And uh, that's all you got to do. I'll take it for a sale and see how it goes. Thank you. Well, thanks again, viewers, for watching my uh, little video on rudder maintenance, replacing a can. Um, hope to see you in the next episode of Hobie Cat Maintenance.